This is Super Munchers, created by MEC, the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium, or Corporation, depends on which year. And they made Super Munchers, Amazon Trail, Oregon Trail, they made a lot of other muncher games, and they basically created a bunch of educational games for children in the early 90s for Macintosh and PC. This was my favorite game because it lets you munch on the terms that match the prompt at the top while avoiding the things called troggles, which would try to eat you or stop you. And if you collected enough of the valid terms, you'd become a super muncher and you'd be able to smash the troggles with your cape. I thought this was a pretty successful game because it was not only fun and entertaining, but replayable. I can't think of how many times I replayed this game throughout my childhood just to play it one more time because I also have other little mini games like mysteries and stuff like that to kind of keep you entertained. But overall, I think it's a great game and I wish they made more of them. So in this video, I'm going to make my own version. So in this build out, I'm going to use Bevy and Rust, and I'm going to use a lot of copy pasted code from the Bevy examples folders. If you go to Bevy's GitHub repo, they have a great folder full of examples showing 2D and 3D games, as well as a lot of other things like their entity component system and other types of tools they've built for game developers. With that being said, I'll start off by using Bevy to build out my basic game which involves the game, a player, and the cruncher that they control. I also need to build out a board, which has a, a bunch of rows and columns full of text and terms that the user can click on, as well as a, a game over state. So I wanted to use more features that are available in Bevy 0.5, which is now currently released. At the time of this build, it was still in the main branch of Git, but basically this is all built on Bevy 0.5. The repo itself has been since updated to work directly with 0.5. I had to make a couple extra tweaks post release of that Bevy version. But generally all the code you see here is Bevy 0.5. With that being said, let's watch me build out number crunchers, super munchers, whatever you want to call it, but I call it the cruncher munchers. So I want to start with the basics. Within the super muncher style game, there's a score and there's a, a, like a meter, a crunch meter. I'm going to call mine score and score streak. And I, I wanted to get some really cool assets, so I went to Kenny NL to find something interesting. They had some monster assets and all that, but I couldn't really find anything that I wanted per se until I went to the space one, which also happened to be used by the, the bevy example. Alien Cake Attic. So I thought, hey, this is a great option since it's already been used by the Bevy Engine. Why as well use similar models? So I thought this alien here looks kind of like a muncher already. And they have some great platforms in the space uh, kit from Kenny that would look great as the platforms used in the bottom of the muncher. I know in the original Super Munchers it's 2D and they basically just have little boxes, but I wanted to use something more awesome like a 3D model. So I chose their space platform to represent the floor. And then I'll use the alien for the muncher. Here he is, up close. And then I'm gonna use astronauts as the bad people because basically it's kind of an ET story. Maybe the astronauts are here to try to capture the muncher before he can collect all his valid terms and get home. So it was a little confusing to try to find the right platform because all the file names were slightly weird, but I was able to find it. Here I'm just trying to clean up my workspace a little bit. But basically with uh, Bevy, you can use a GLB file, which is a type of 3D model object. And a GLB is just a fancy way of saying a binary file. And it's a, a binary file of a 3D model that's using a format called GL, Transmission Format. But it's basically a really great way to store models and it's useful in a lot of applications. Also useful on the web. So I load up my models and get them running and I'm just gonna print out the word frog a bunch of times because I don't wanna create a bunch of terms yet for my game. But before I get there, I have to set up all my camera focus and all that and set the board up. So I need to get the board kind of lined up and I'm using the Alien Cake Attic uh, example from Bevy to create what the board should look like. 
obviously their docks are not very useful in some cases, so I had to kind of fiddle about to figure out how to get the camera to look at the board correctly. So I'm switching between the perspective and isometric camera quite a bit to kind of figure out how I want to build the game. The isometric camera in Bevy is called orthographic, but I, I call it isometric just because I'm weird. And it kind of creates that angle where it's from the side and it's from a top-down view almost, but quite a, kind of creates a weird perspective. And the per perspective camera uh, vanishes towards the thing they call the vanishing point. So it creates this different types of view for your 3D models, which I wasn't really keen on. I wanted to use the orthographic camera, but there were some weird issues that I was running into where things kept getting flipped upside down. So I did a lot of debugging. Usually when I write things with Unity, I'm used to having their visual uh, editor tools, the UI, to help figure out where the camera's, what the camera's doing. So here was a little bit novel experience for me. I'm not really a game developer. I'm obviously not because of the way I code. I'm a web developer. I make software. I make mobile apps. I don't make video games. I have launched a couple of video games. So there are some things I know, but learning how the cameras work without having a UI it was really hard for me. And I admit that. But I got over it and I figured it out. I had to use a lot of things like a whiteboard to figure out what was going on and consult the uh, Bevy Discord chat. So thanks, thanks everybody over there for helping me out. But I got it kind of working. And eventually I was able to move on and start drawing my a text UI and spawning the, the crunch meter and the score uh, meter. And the crunch meter is really just to help us see how many uh, consecutive terms we've co collected that were valid. It's kind of like a ch uh, combo bonus. Bevy's really great with their their UI building tools. They have this thing where you can build a text UI on top of each other with a text bundle. You use a thing called sections to create an array of text and then have e each one go to the next line. I thought that was pretty swell. So I'm using that here to clean up my text a little bit on my UI. Then there became a controlling issue where I couldn't get the, the player to stay on the board. So I looked through my code again, compared it to the Alien Cake Attic movement code, and it just didn't seem right. And I couldn't quite figure out what was going on because it looked identical. Yes, I had renamed the variables. I wanted to call mine columns and rows. They had, I think it was I and J, and I didn't think those letters were useful. So I went into Blender and looked at the, the models themselves, and I found the bug. The models were not centered. So with that little fix, I was able to import all my models from Kenny NL and tweak them inside Blender and re-export them as GLBs to fix them. And that say, solved my problems. Funnily enough, this probably happens quite a bit and people don't realize it. And like I said, as a non-game developer, I wouldn't have thought about that. So I slammed my head against the wall for about three hours trying to figure out why. And then I realized it's just because the models were messed up. You don't really get that in other fields, I think. Good old models. I'm working on getting the score to update now so that when you lose, it'll show the proper score of your final count and it'll also keep track of your score when you crunch things. This became a little bit difficult because I realized that in Bevy, there's not really a great way to show text easily. What ended up happening was that I had to figure out how to get my text to show up on the board using the UI text because there's not a great way currently to put a text asset into the game itself as a object, an entity. There are some options on GitHub issues, but I didn't really want to do those. So instead I chose to hack it. I wanted to put my text in the UI camera and then overlay it on top of the board in a way that it made it look like it was on the board but only because I hacked it in there. That involved a little bit of silly math to make it line up nicely on the grid and get it to show up on each column and row. So as you can see here, I'm trying to fiddle about with the, the, the basic uh, math to get it to hack into placing directly on top of my actual 3D board using UI text. Not proud of it, but it is a hack and it did work as long as you don't resize the, win the, the window, which you can't because I set it to freeze at uh, 720p, I believe. So in this way, I got it to work. It looks a little wonky. But at the end of the day, I was happy with it.
I also decided to shorten the words so that they showed up nicely inside the tiles. Again, if you're using a more robust system for text that's an asset inside the game, like in Unity or Godot or in, uh, Unreal, you can make these into 2D or 3D objects that line up nicer. But since I'm doing it with UI, it's pretty hacky. Let's be honest. But I'm satisfied. So here we go. Now we're trying to move on to the part where if a user clicks on a, a, the uh, term, it'll count it as a point. And if it's the correct term, as in if, I look at, if I'm looking for animals with fur and I click on cat, here I have the valid terms shorter list. If it matches a valid term, I get a point. If it doesn't, I should lose my streak and get my streak set to zero. I think in the original number crunchers and, and super munchers, if you click on the wrong term, you never really die. You just lose your streak and you can't become super. The only way you can really lose is if you get hit by the troggle monster. So I try to follow that same rule and allow users to click on terms. And if they're right, they get their store, score streak added, uh, incremented by one basically. And if they lose, they lose their streak and that's it. And then they have a points score that's separate. So either way, if they collect five terms and then lose their streak, they still have five points. Now I'm moving on to the part where we have the monsters. And in our ET-like story, the monsters are humans. The humans are astronauts, and the aliens are trying to run away from the astronauts by collecting valid animals that match with fur, because that made sense. And the astronauts cannot touch your, creature, your muncher, because if they do, it's automatic game over. So I kind of copy-pasted a lot of this user movement and took out the keyboard aspect of it to let the AI basically, I wouldn't call it AI per se, but let the, the monsters move on their own every update in a random direction. So I kind of let that happen the same way it happens in Super Munchers. If you watch the Troggles in Super Munchers, the original game, they pause and sometimes they don't seem to move. That bug occurs in my game too, because essentially if it's at the top of the board and the random number picks up, it's not going to go up off the screen unless it leaves the, the tiles. It'll just stay there and not move. So I kind of recreated the same logic in some ways. I don't have the source code, by the way. I'm just guessing here. My assumption is that's why it makes that weird issue. So here I'm using the great matching tools built into Rust to use my random direction mover. So here's my wild movement and it spawned three different troggles. I didn't want to have that many, so I could tweak it a little bit to reduce the amount of troggles on board. Now he's going crazy over here in the corner, up and down, but whatever, it works. And now I have a monster that can hunt you down and end your game and ruin your points. This was great fun because I slowed down the monster by giving them a more accurate fixed time, time update. And then the final step is to actually detect collision. In my game, I didn't actually want to use any collision or physics. I just wanted to say if they're on the same tile, it's a collision. Here I just have them collide, game over. And at the same time, if you get to a 15 score streak, you can win the game. So I created two ways to game over, one by colliding with an astronaut and the second one by hitting the score streak of 15, which is just whatever I set it to. If somebody were to iterate on this game, they could take that score streak number, instead create a super version of your alien muncher and let you attack the astronauts just like in super munchers. But in my game, it's game over, you win. Cause I don't wanna build out a cape for an alien. I just don't have that skill. Not gonna happen. And finally, I just kind of clean up the, the game over screen to make sure that the users can start a new game. Uh, there was a little bit of a bug here because I used the space bar to restart the game, which is also the start of clicking a button. So I wanted to switch that around. It took me a little time to figure that out. Finally, the last part is properly finding your terms to see if your terms have been clicked on. 
technically right now in the game, there's an exploit. If I click on the word goat, it's an animal with fur, I can just keep tapping it and get, build up my score to 15 and win the game. In traditional super munchers, the term just appears. You can't click it more than once. In this case, good or bad, I chose to only remove the term if it's a good term. So if you click on a valid term, or I should say spacebar it, it'll disappear. So that's what I'm trying to do here is to turn a valid term into an empty string, which is my hack of saying this term has been used or consumed. I didn't do that for invalid terms, which I believe in the original super munchers, it does remove invalid terms if you click on them, just because it might confuse you. But here I can say, if I click on a ferret, it's gone. That way a user can't exploit the game and just click on the, or tap on the same term multiple times. So that was kind of the last bug fix I'll do for this game, because I figured that's a useful feature to have in the game, not to let you exploit the game and win by cheating. So here's the final verdict of the game. I can walk around with WASD. I can use spacebar to click on terms and consume them. I can spawn a troggle or an astronaut that walks around the board randomly to try to catch me. And if I get to 15 on my crunch meter, I should become a super muncher, but we don't want to do that. So instead, we just end the game. There it is. The code's available on GitHub as always. The link is in the description of the video. Thank you.